Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hi, everybody. It's Doreen. And I am back today with a card for a little boy or it could be for a young man or it could be for an adult male. So the cartridges we will be using today is the Father's Day cartridge and the Wild Card cartridge. So what does our project look like today? Well, it is a birthday card, and it looks like this. And it wobbles. So come on and join me, and I'm going to show you how I made this card. Okay, everybody, so we're going to bring up our supplies so we can get started making our card. Now, this is a little card for a young man or a little boy and my card measures nine inches by six inches and then I've taken and scored it in half to make it a four and a half by six inch card. The other thing that I've done is I've gone ahead and rounded my corners all the way around and I've inked my edges using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, the chipped sapphire. So the next thing that I want to talk about that I've done, and this paper is some coordinations cardstock, is I wanted to make it look like that it was a dirt or sand that the truck was driving over. Now, I saw this card on someone's blog, and she gave... Um, just a few measurements, but not measurements for everything. So I've gone and done some of the measurements that she gave, as well as coming up with my own measurement and design of, of how I'm going to set up my card. So now what I've done is I've taken some brown cardstock, and this is some of the Paper Studio textured cardstock, and it looks like this. And what I did was I took it and tore it into strips. And then once I had them all torn up into strips, I then layered them together. And then I took my Tim Holtz gathered twigs ink and inked the cardstock from where the paper tore. Because once the paper tore, it was a white color. And I just inked that to make it look like dirt. And then I've gone ahead, as I said before, and glued those together. So what I want to do is I want to add these to my card. And I also rounded the corners. And I'm just going to place them right there. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly mark this with a pencil so I know the top of where I want the dirt to go because I want to go ahead and add my sentiment before I put the dirt down. So what I've done is I've stamped out using my stamp -a jig happy birthday to a special person and this stamp is from an Inka Dinka Doo stamp set that is called um, Best Wishes and I'm sorry for this glare. So I've already got it all stamped out on the stamp -a jig and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chip sapphire again to stamp out my greeting. So before we stamp that, oh, I dropped my stamp -a jig Sorry about that. I'm going to bring up my mat that I use for when I'm using uh, stamping clear stamps. I'm going to press that down and then I'm going to line up my stamp -a jig or my stamp sheet where I want my happy birthday to go. So I want to place it right there. So I'm going to get my stamp -a jig and line it up. And then I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to make sure we ink it up and stamp down 
on the right side because I've been known to stamp it upside down. So I've got my ink on there and I'm going to put that down for just a second. And this is where I want my image to go. So I'm going to lift that up and then I'm going to line my block up and then I'm going to press down. So now I have my image. And it looks like I'm going to have to restamp this because I've stamped some of the image along here as well when I dropped it. But maybe we'll be able to cover that up. So just a little mistake there. But I'm going to go keep going because I think this is the only card, blue card stock that I have and I really like this color. So I'm just going to work with that. Sometimes that happens. You drop your stamp and you end up getting the image on your card again. But I'm going to work with that and keep going. So now what we're going to do is just take our tape, our ATG gun. I'm going to move my stamp -a jig and my stamp block out of the way. And bring back up my supplies and we're going to get some tape on the back of here and we're going to just add this dirt to our card. So I've got my tape on there and I want to make sure I get down here on the edge. And I'm going to bring my card back. And I'm just going to line this up and press down. And when it the stamp tipped over and fell, it just lightly stamped it so you can barely see it. So I'm just going to keep going and use this. So now we're going to add our truck. So let's talk about the truck. Now the truck is from the Father's Day cartridge again and when I originally bought this cartridge and I used it I believe last year for my Father's Day cards I really didn't like it because I didn't like all the paper piecing that I had to do to get my um, image but since I've started doing a lot of paper piecing in some of my other cartridges for instance the wrap it up I think I'm starting to like this cartridge so what I've done is, this is the truck, and if you don't like paper piecing, you might not like doing this, but what I did was I cut out actually four of the truck. Now, how I did this, and this does not come with a handbook, it just comes with the overlay. So I'm going to bring up the gypsy so you can see how I cut this. I originally laid the truck out. And we're going to go to that cartridge. And it is key number 30. And it looks like this. So I originally laid one out like this. And I cut that one in black. So that would be this black right here. Then... I went and I cut, I laid out another one, and these are all cut at two and a half inches. Leave your aspect ratio the same, and you don't have to touch your real dial size. So then I copied the first one, and I laid another one out, and this one I cut the same thing, key number 30, but what I did was... I went to my advanced tab and then to my high contour and I just hit everything but the frame of the truck. So it looks like that. Now that is cut all in white. And then from there I laid out another truck using key 30 and I hid, I went to my high contour again. Let me pick the right one. And I hit everything but the wheels. Or the portions of the wheels. And I wanted it to look like the truck was had dirt on the wheels. So that's what that is. And I did use the same paper as the dirt here. And I um, sanded it. And I didn't say that before. I did sand this 
with my Tim Holtz sander block that looks like this. And then I used the gathered twigs and I did the same thing on the mud for the wheels. And then I went back and laid out a, another truck and went to my hide and contour and hid just everything but these pieces here. Now I'm sure there might have been a different way to do this but this is how I ended up doing it and as a matter of fact from the um, website or the blog that I was on this is the way she did it as well. I don't have her name in my head right now but I do have it written down and I will include her blog down in the description bar showing how she did her truck. So now I really didn't have to, now that I look at the cartridge, put this one um, down and do the hide and contour and hide everything because key number 40 is similar to that and gives you that. But I just did it this way because I liked the way she did it as well. So that's how I cut mine. So now... Once I had everything cut out, I then went and pieced it all together, and this is what I came up with. So this is what my truck looks like, and my truck is going to go about right there. But what I want to do with mine is I'm going to add an action wobble. This is going to be for a three-year-old little boy, so I thought he'd get a kick out of the action wobble, which I've used before. And so I'm going to go ahead and... Add my action wobble to the truck. So the first thing I need to do is we're going to place our pieces on the truck first. I think you have an option of doing it either way. You can place your place the base layer down first and then put your other your image on top. But I'm going to do it this way. Because I have to make sure I get this the way I want it on the dirt. So I've placed my um, piece down. And now I'm going to peel off the base layer. And I've used these Action Wobbles before. And I will put a link down in the description bar where you can purchase or where I've purchased mine. I'm sure there's other stores now that are other websites that have them. But I actually purchased them from the makers of the Action Wobbles. So our truck is going to lay like so, and then I'm gonna press down. So now there is our truck. So now the last thing I wanna add on the front of the card is, I'm gonna open this up. I've gone ahead and cut out a sun. And I've used, for the inner circle of the sun, I've used, I've stamped out a face using my Peachy Keen stamp. This is the PK490 Everyday Character Face Assortment. And I used the one and a half inch size. So I'm going to place my sun down. And now my sun is from the Wild Card Cartridge. And it is on page 55. And it looks like this. And on your gypsy or your overlay, that is going to be, let's go to that cartridge. It's going to be, you hit the icon key and key 24 and you'll get your sun. Now I cut that out at, let's see. What I had to do for this is I had to hit my real dial size and it came out to be one and a half inches. If you don't hit the real dial size, it'll say it's 3.59. So I just went ahead and hit the real dial size because if I put in one and a half inches, it was very, 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 very tiny. So that's why I used the real dial size. And you don't have to do anything with the aspect ratio. So let's get our sun on our card. And I'm going to use the two-way 
zig pen to get some glue all the way around and the other thing that I have done is I have gone ahead and inked my edges of my sun using the more mustard by stamping up and I stamped the face with the same thing so we're gonna put our Sun over here in the corner and then I'm gonna get some ink I'm sorry some glue on my Sun face and I'm going to add that in the center there just push that over just a little bit and there you have it now this cardstock that I've used is just scraps that I've had left over so if you have scraps then you this should work out for you fine so now what I've done on the inside is I've taken my labels for die and I've taken some of the scrap paper that I had left over from making my envelope and I've made my envelope using the crafters companion again and the envelope paper is from this paper pack by DCWV called Stack 7. So the scraps that I had left over from the envelope, I just made one layer of the labels for, and this is the largest size. And then I went to my computer and printed out my sentiment. And then I used the next size down for the labels for die and ran my it ran it through my big shot and there you have it so this is my card for my husband's grand nephew thanks for watching everybody bye